Hey, what's up? Lightbook Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the fourth movie in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, On Stranger Tides. Pirates of the Caribbean, On Stranger Tides. This is directed by Rob Marshall. So this is the first Pirates film not directed by Gore Verbinski. Um, Jerry Bruckheimer executive produced this movie as well, starring Johnny Depp, of course. Jeffrey Rush comes back as Barbosa. We have Sam McLaughlin playing this character called Philip. Uh, we have Ian McShane. He is Edward Teach, a.k.a. Blackbeard himself. Penelope Cruz plays this character, Angelica. So that's really our big five within this. Of course, our, our, uh, Gibbs is back as well. Ooh, thunder. The storm is among us. So this film starts off in Spain. Um, the Spanish have located a map which shows the shipwreck of Ponce de Leon. Uh, in the 1500s. So we know that this movie takes place in the 1700s. We do now know that King George II is the King George that is referenced in the first two films. We see King George II in this movie. King George II ran England, ran the British Empire from 1727 to 1760. That is a quick little Google search for you. So the Pirates of the Caribbean film series takes place in between 1727 and 1760. That time period right there, right? What is that? 23 years, right? 23 years. Yeah, good times. So, um, the Spaniards are on their way to find the two silver chalices amongst the Ponce de Leon shipwreck in order to then get a mermaid tear to then go to the Fountain of Youth. Someone with, whoever has the cup of the Fountain of Youth water with the tear in it, um, gets the life, whoever does not have it, uh, gets the life taken away from them and goes into the person that's the fountain of youth. It's not truly an eternal youth fountain. It's really a whoever drinks the glass, what, whoever has uh, however many years you have left, that's the amount of years you get. So it's just an added bonus. It's not a eternal life bit. Clarifying that. Barbosa is now working with the English government um, to get a ship to get the chalices to get to the Fountain of Youth for King George II. King George II is trying to also get Jack Sparrow to uh, join the crew um, because of the map that everyone thinks he has after it was taken then from the Spaniards. Uh, Penelope Cruz plays Angelica, who is a old flame of Captain Jack back in the day. And she is impersonating Jack to get a crew because she has a ship. The ship being the Queen Anne's Revenge, captained by Blackbeard himself. Edward Teach, a.k.a. Blackbeard, played by Ian McShane. Uh, Philip is a missionary, played by Sam McCla uh, Claflin. Love Sam. Sam Claflin is superb. He's, he's wonderful. And so that's, he's a part of the Queen Anne's Revenge. So Jack inadvertently gets taken onto the Queen Anne's Revenge. So you have the Queen Anne's Revenge led by Blackbeard, trying to find the chalices. You have the Spaniards trying to find the chalices. You have Geoffrey Rush, uh, Captain Barbosa, captaining the English fleet to get to the chalices. So it's a race to get to the chalices. Eventually we get to Whitehead Bay. There's a mermaid face-off. Uh, Ponce de Leon's ship is located, but it turns out the Spaniards took the chalices already, so it's a matter of where are the Spaniards now, who can then have the chalices. So then Johnny Depp, Captain Jack Sparrow, um, and Captain Barbosa go into Spaniard territory camp, take the chalices. There's another battle going on. Eventually, everyone convenes at the Fountain of Youth. Tricks were played. The one-legged man is destined to kill Blackbeard himself, one-legged man being Captain Barbosa because his leg was taken in a raid from Blackbeard since the third movie that we've seen of him in. Um, so Barbosa's smart. He, lay, he, he dips the blade within toxin uh, poison from the toads that are inhabited on the island. So he slices Blackbeard, stabs him, and then Angelica inadvertently, who is Blackbeard's daughter, upon taking the sword out of her father, um, cuts herself. So then Jack tricks Blackbeard into taking the cup with the mermaid tear in it after the Spaniards, you know, tear apart the fountain of youth. Um, and then Angelica takes the other cup, but Jack really confesses he switched them so Angelica gets the lives that Blackbeard would have had left and then Jack maroons her on an island um and then we see her at the very end post credit with Jack's voodoo doll popping back up again it is a action-packed sword-filled thriller film this cost a lot of money to make 
I'm not quite certain on how many millions. It, I want to say it cost 300 million to make and it made 900 million something domestic. I, I want to say that. Don't quote me on that, but I feel like it's in that range. So this is 2011. So this is four years after the last film. Um, and it's still under the King George II reign. So between 1727 and 1760, that's, that's the chunk here. It's not specifically elicited that the 10 years later that we see at the post credit of At World's End is in the same exact time as On Stranger Tides. It's not explicitly said, it's just commonly agreed upon that there is a four year difference between films of making them, but there's a 10 year difference between films of plot points. It's just commonly accepted kind of a thing. Because then there's another giant jump within uh, going to Pirates of the Caribbean 5, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Now, this movie actually did not reference the plot points of Dead Men Tell No Tales, which is to do with Poseidon, Strident, things of that nature. The words Dead Men Tell No Tales was not elicited within this film, which is funny because the film's past always elicited to the next film, the next plot points. So at the end of this film, we have Angelica on the island. We have um, Gibbs and Captain Jack getting the pearl back from its glass bottle that was in a uh, cabinet of uh, Blackbeard. So there'll be more obvious uh, Black Pearl adventures. Barbosa claims Blackbeard's magical sword. So he therefore is the new captain. He is Captain Barbosa of the Queen Anne's Revenge. Pretty damn cool ship, by the way. But yeah, that is Pirates of the Caribbean 4 on Stranger Tides. Um, so Curse of the Black Pearl is 1. Dead Man's Chest is 2. At World's End is three, On Stranger Tides is four, and then on to Dead Men Tell No Tales. And then we will see what the future lies for the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. I would love to be a part of this franchise. It is so fun to watch. It looks like it is hardcore when it comes to stunt and physicality, but it looks to be incredible to be a part of it. I've seen plenty of interviews, plenty of behind the scene things, and it's, it's a franchise I've always loved. I will always love, and no one can take that away from me. That's all I got to say. Mucho mahalo.